Well, hey there, Moose Tube fans. Lone Moose here. Hope everyone's doing okay on this uh, hotter than hell weekend here, at least it is in South Texas. Uh, this is going to be an interesting video. I don't know that I'm going to call it fun, I'm going to call it interesting. Uh, what I'm going to do in this video is work on my modifications to this Kraft Holsters Alaskan Chest Rig to, uh, number one, make it more practical for me, and number two, uh, to send to my buddy Al at Kraft Holsters so he can share this with his uh, leadership with the company and also with Falco who builds their holsters. And hopefully he'll be able to convince them that you know, some of my ideas may have merit. It might put them in a little better position in the marketplace. So, uh, you yeah, know, I'm just going to be tinkering. So this is very ad-libbed. I'll edit out some of the stuff. but. Basically, this is the Alaska chest holster. Uh, I'll show you here in a minute what the issue is and how I plan on going about trying to fix that issue. Uh, to do that, I'm going to take off my brand new holster they just sent me, and I'm going to put the old one back on. You know, I don't have a punch, so I'm going to have to basically drill holes in the leather and things like that. I'm improvising. Uh, so I would rather do that to a uh, holster that is not usable for me, at least not right now, and uh, see what I can come up with. And then when I find a design that I like, I'll put this on here. Now, the offer also goes out to any other uh, people who watch this video that have any kind of a chest holster that have a similar issue. Uh, you know, you're welcome to use my ideas or you can contact me through the comments with a means of contacting you and we can try and uh, you know engineer design something for your particular rig that might work for you um, and the same for any manufacturers you know i'm not going to patent or try to patent this idea so you know it's this is freeware if you want to call it that uh, you guys are welcome to use it uh, if you do just please credit me with it and we'll be good to go so uh, let me show you the issue here. It takes just a second to get everything set up. Okay, here's the issue that I have. And not just with Kraft's holster, but with everyone's chest holster. And I've got, I think, four of them for different models. Uh, but I have the same problem with every one because nobody has a uh, solution in their product to resolve it. And that is simply snap it, draw it. See what happens? How this thing rose up many many inches and it actually came out and that's because I've stretched this. Some of my others don't even come out. With some of the others I have to anchor it with my thumb like this to hold the holster down to draw. Now you know I'm looking at these holsters in the context of Alaska Bear Protection and if that's the context I'm using the last thing I want to have to do is take one hand out of a potential fight situation to do this to get to this because what happens if a bear or a moose startles me I turn to try and get away I trip on my own fat feet in the uh, alder undergrowth and go down when I go down I happen to fall on this arm it's pinned I don't know that I can get that holster out the pistol out of the holster in time to potentially uh, save my life or life of others so, to me, it's a major life safety concern issue. So, let me go pop the old holster back on here, and I'll get busy playing and tinkering. All right, Al, when I asked for the additional clip, this is the one that I was talking about. Okay, this is off of the shoulder holster. Tight in here. For the Colt King Cobra, and I'm assuming, you know, well, for any of your shoulder holster rigs with the horizontal part. This, if this will focus, this is what I need two of. Because even if I had this, I could make that work on my modification here for the chest holster. Instead of having to go up inside here, come on, focus. Okay, and do that. Because this lays much flatter. If you can have your guys send me two of these and two of the studs 
that go with it uh, to anchor it together. That's what I really need. So talk to them. Now I think, you know, if you can show them this video, this will tell them exactly what it is that I'm looking for. So I will see you all in a little bit as I start going down my uh, road building this uh, modification to try and get my message across. Okay, let's try this a second time because I forgot to turn the microphone on again. Old age senior moment. What you're looking at here on the bench, uh, you know, I told you I, two or three, a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was, that I went to Tandy Leather in San Antonio and I picked up some pieces and parts to, uh, you know, try and make this concept of mine come to fruition. And, uh, you know, including a three quarter inch wide strip of leather right here. Uh, and some leather dye and sheen to kind of make it match. Uh, you know, this is the old holster over here, and this is, you know, what I'm working with. It's not going to be perfect, but again, this is concept. I also was trying to find some of these things, and I haven't found anywhere where I can buy them yet. Uh, but I did find an old backpack that had these hanging on the bottom, so I cut them off, and then had this stitched closed to make a belt loop for me. Because uh, they should mesh up with this. We'll find out shortly and see how that goes So I just wanted to kind of show you some of the uh, weird Science and engineering that's going on inside my moose brain So let me get the old holster put back on and see where we go from here Okay, folks, I'm gonna take this. I don't know how well this will focus Little nylon snap set here with a piece of the leather that I kind of tanned up and it'll go through here like this and connect to the uh, bottom of the holster but I don't have any punches so I'm going to have to rely on a drill press here and so the way I'm going to do that is get scrap piece of wood here Get my leather kind of aligned how I want it. Get my drill press set where I want it. it looks like that's about centered. All right. So this was an 11 64 inch bit that I drilled. These uh, studs, threaded studs that I'm going to be using uh, are a quarter inch is what it says on the package. And so I just need to make sure that it fits here. And it does. Because it's going to go through both of these and have the big thick piece of the holster in the middle and you'll see that in a second because I'm getting ready to drill it out now. Yeah, that'll give me what I need right there. I know that Al, you and your buddies at uh, Falco are probably cringing watching me drill your beautiful leather like this. Uh, I need a little something under there to just kind of help support that. I uh, wonder what that could be. Maybe a bunch of these old paint chips or whatever. Something there just to kind of level it up. There we go. So, Falco, my apologies to you guys because I'm about to drill through the bottom of your logo here. Let's go back to the bench, put this thing back together.
Okay, uh, this may be a little difficult to see, but here I've got the stud pushed through. Come through here. Get that in place. And wouldn't you know it, it's just... But slot head instead of Phillips, but that's enough to make that look right. Now see, so this is what I'm talking about. Okay. It's attached to the holster. Of course, optimally, I would like to see the uh, holster extended so that there's kind of a bottom flap on it. This is the uh, shoulder holster rig that I have for my Colt King Cobra. And you see how there's a little extra leather down here and this buckle bolts onto it. That would be ideal. Uh, because otherwise, you're going to have your pistol rubbing against there. Now, I put the flush side down, or the shiny side, not the slotted side down, uh, so that it might not cause as much of an issue. So now my next problem is, how do I get this to connect to the belt? Well, hang on. Let me do some thinking and conniving, and I'll be back to you in a minute. All right. What I did, remember I showed you earlier the piece that had the belt loop on it? I had to cut the little tag end off so I could get it off. But you feed it in through the loop closest to the holster. Turn it back around. Feed it through here. And this gives you now the ability to shorten it up. And you know, it wasn't, I was locking it down a little better there a minute ago. Uh, might need a little bit thicker one. That's one option. Another option is to use this piece of leather that I have here. And come up and over to where I can lock it in on this end. And then slide this up here. Come up here and make some loops and put some snaps in to snap it together. Okay, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but like I said, this is an experiment that I'm playing with. Let's zoom back out here so you can see that, that's a little better. Uh, so I may come, you know, put some snaps in here where this can snap at different intervals. Uh, so, I'm just playing. Let me try the uh, one with this black belt loop first. Try it on, so stand by. Okay, we're going to drill some holes in this strap now for those little anchor studs. Let me get it lined up where I want it, like that. Now, these holes I'm drilling with a 3 16 inch bit, and the only thing that these studs are going to be passing through is two layers of this thin leather, so I'm going to be using eighth inch studs instead of the quarter inch like I did for the big connection. see 
Come on, camera, focus. Focus, focus, camera. Focus, focus. Hello. I don't know why it's being obstinate. All right, anyway, you can tell I drilled four holes in here so that you could anchor it at whatever point meets your belt loop needs and then anchor the top part. So it can actually adjust from all the way down here if you're a tall or long and lanky person up to short like that. Of course, you'd have to cut your tag end off if you're really short-waisted. So it gives you a lot of uh, adjustability this way. So let me put this together and we'll see how it all fits and comes comes together. Guess who's back at the drill press again? What I didn't bother checking was I actually have to go back and re-drill these at the 1364 diameter like I did the first one. Because I was thinking they're shorter studs, they'd be smaller diameter. Well, they weren't and I didn't check it. Plus, I forgot to uh, drill this initial hole, which is how it attaches to the top piece. I did, but now i got to drill them out bigger. Let me try a little stuff. And yep, fits like a glove. Okay, so we're in business now. Let me go put this thing together. You little suckers are in there kind of tight. All right, in order to put this together now, we've already used one, come on camera, focus, of the silver quarter inch studs. What are, what are they actually call these things? Screw posts. So one of the quarters, and we're gonna use three of the eighth inch. So the first thing we do, Come up, go through, line up our holes, put the screw post on the bottom part. Get in there. Then the screw down through the top part. Now, here is how you would set your adjustments for your belt loop size and also for your chest. So I'm going to start out right here, put one in here and one in here. And, you know, like I said, I, I'm not a professional. I haven't done any kind of leather work. And, uh, 50 years or more. Used to when I was a teenager in my early 20s. Well, 40-some, I'm not 70s. So, anyway, uh, you get the idea. And so I'm just working with the tools I have at hand here at the house to try and make this concept viable. 
So, zoom it back out just a little bit. Here we have our loop section for the belt. I have it anchored in two spots and where it comes to the top. And you can also, once you get it on your belt, just disconnect it this way. Leave this on if you want to take the holster off. And then later when you put the holster back on, it's already in place. So let me put this on and see what it looks like. I'll be right back. Okay, like I said, I already got that on my belt. Throw that over and around. Flip that together. Now, I can already see I'd have to make some adjustments here on the uh, belt loop. So hang on, let me do those. I'll be right back. Okay, I shortened it up. Two. You see, here's the thing. Now, even though this is not the right size for it, I can jam it in here. And so what this does now, see, it anchors that holster. That sucker's jammed in there. See how it'll come out now? And the holster don't ride up. And that's kind of my ultimate goal. I will have to shorten this up some more. Because uh, this is trial and error. But to make it where it would fit for me. Uh, so I'm playing with it, but I think you guys get the idea uh, of where I'm at. I'm going to make a couple more cuts and adjustments to it and kind of finalize it. Well, actually, yeah, because that other holster is even longer. So let me shorten this up some more. See, it probably needs to be about like that. That would be perfect. So let me mark that and see what I can do to uh, make it work from there. Be right back. Okay, I'm back after making a few more modifications here. First thing I did was I shortened this up a little bit, and then I added two more holes to here. And I think I got a pretty damn good perfect fit for me. Okay, again, I'm jamming that damn thing in there, okay? Eh. And like a dummy, I didn't tighten that up. I just had it stuck in there. I shall be right back. Excuse me, you know, me, I like to show it all. Good, bad, ugly, hiccups, mistakes, carelessness, and that was carelessness on my part. Be right back. Okay, finer hiccup resolved. Now, you know, I've got loose tabs and stuff here. Uh, I'm just playing with this right now. Okay, but again, this should make my point. Jammed in here, good and tight. Boom, holster doesn't move. Now when you go back and you look at the earlier part of the video when I had the regular holster on there and I was pulling this, and you saw how far it rode up my chest. That's why this is such a critical thing and why it's so important, craft holster folks, that you guys do this on your future models because you'll be the only one in the industry that does. And you'll have people like me out here promoting it and Al will be doing, you know, things on your other social media to promote it and uh, see what we can do to make this you know a real winner for you make you guys stand out in the market but I like it uh, the only thing I would change and I'll show you back at the bench again in a second is when you actually make the holsters to have that little tab down at the bottom so that your pistol is not riding against that metal stud in there because that will scratch the finish uh, you know, this, this is a prototype. This is just to get my point across to you guys what it is that I really want you to do. So, you know, I have the way of doing another version of this with that bonding strap, but I like all leather. If I can do it in all leather, I like it better. So, all right, let me show you that and we'll do a wrap up. All right, this holster right here is the Kraft Holsters shoulder holster for my Colt King Cobra. And this is a horizontal shoulder holster. Take this little snap off here. Okay. I see that little tab on the bottom of the holster? That's what needs to go on these uh, Alaska chest holsters. A little tab like that for this to connect to.
Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun for me tinkering around, kind of coming up with this little monstrosity right here. But you know what? It works. It works for me. So hopefully Al will be able to convince his leadership and the Falco people that this is something that has merit with this video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button for me. Uh, if you hit the notify bell, you'll be notified when uh, I post new videos. I want to say welcome to uh, my buddy Tim. Tim and I used to work together in Salt Lake uh, many, many years ago as well. Great friend. Uh, so he saw some of my videos and I just saw where he had subscribed. So welcome aboard, Tim. Uh, hopefully I'll get to see Tim and his wife Valerie the next time we go to uh, Utah. I'll be able to. We usually stop in Albuquerque uh, over overnight, which is about the halfway driving mark, and that's where Tim's at. Uh, but anyway, if you hit the notify bell, you'll be notified when I post new videos. Uh, this is a lot of fun, but I need your thoughts and your comments, and I really need your comments on what you think about my uh, cobbled together little device here. Uh, I like it. You know, I also have the ability, like I said, to do the one with that. Uh, bonding straps, you know, those kind of nylon strap things, uh, but, you know, I prefer the leather. I think I'm going to try that first, and hopefully Al will be able to get me a couple of those clips like I showed at the beginning of the video um, so that uh, I can put this together and it'll look even neater. So with all that, let me know what you guys think. Uh, what would you do? Uh, or do you even see this as a problem? You know, I've had when I did my other videos on some chest holsters, some comments that everybody said, well, I don't have that problem. Well, maybe you're not a, you know, early old, early old aged man with a big fat belly. I don't know. Uh, but I know I have that problem with the chest holsters, that the holster moves way too much before the uh, pistol comes out. And that's what I'm trying to prevent. So let me know what you think of that. Uh, hope everyone enjoys the rest of your weekend. I'm going to go up to Dallas tomorrow and see my daughter, son-in-law Keith and granddaughter Liz. Uh, get to see them two or three times a year and visit with them for a few hours, have lunch, and then come back. So in the meantime, y'all stay safe. This is Lone Moose out. I'll see y'all on the next video.